number four, what if we were to find the limit as x approaches pi from the left of negative cotangent x? So we're going to substitute. If we substitute, we have negative cotangent pi from the left. Okay? So you have to remember your quotient identities, which states that cotangent theta is cosine theta divided by tan theta. Sorry, sine theta. All right? So I'm going to reduce this into a sine and cosine case so I can use your graphs to... Uh, finish it off. You also have to remember that cosine theta graph is your little cups are your little cups and your sine theta graph are your S's. Bam. Okay. So we're going to reduce this into negative cosine pi from the left divided by sine of pi from the left because cotangent is cosine over sine. All right, now we're going to uh, make use of the graphs in answering the questions. So we're going to start off with the cosine graph. Okay, so for cosine, um, let's sketch the cosine graph. It oscillates between 1 and negative 1. And then let's say that's pi over 2, and that's pi, and that's 3 pi over 2. So this pi right here. So cosine of like your cups. Let's do that again. Okay, so what we're doing is we're approaching a point. We're approaching pi from the left side. Okay, we're approaching pi from the left. If you're approaching pi from the left along the graph, what's happening is that you are descending towards that point. If you're descending towards that point, your limit is going to be what you get when you descend towards the corresponding y coordinate. So you're going to be descending towards negative 1. So coming from the top towards negative 1 is negative 1 from the top or negative 1 with a positive direction. All right, so this basically helps us to see that cosine of pi from the left is simply negative 1 from the right. For the denominator, we're going to call on our sine graph to assist us to evaluate what sine of pi from the um, left is. So let's take a look at what the sine graph looks like and computes a uh, sine of pi from the um, left. All right, so your sine graphs are like your S's. So That's just a portion of the sine graph. The sine wave oscillates between 1 and negative 1, just like your cosine graph. So that's 1, and that's negative 1. And this is pi right here. All right, so what we're doing is we're approaching pi from the left. All right, so as we are as approaching pi, Pi from the left is as though we are going along this line. We are descending towards this point. We're looking at the y-coordinate of this point. So y-coordinate of this point is 0. We are approaching that number uh, from above. So we are descending towards 0 from above. Okay, so that's going to be 0 from the top or 0 from the right. So if we put that in here, we're going to have, um, oh wait, what are we going to have? Sine of pi from the left is going to be uh, 0 from the 
top, okay? And then here you have a minus and a minus. You can just multiply. Well, we've got to be careful here with the multiplication. Let's let's leave it out for a second. So, or we can multiply. Let's just multiply. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute this minus with the top here, okay? So just to review what we talked about before, when you're multiplying a directional number by negative, that negativity impacts the sign and it also impacts the direction. So negative 1 from the right multiplied by negative is going to turn it into positive 1 from the left divided by 0 from the right. Now 0 from the right using our knowledge of infinitesimals is 1 over infinity. You drop change flip multiply 1 by infinity over 1 and your final answer is infinity. Okay, so for the last one, problem five, what if we want to find the um, limit as x approaches negative two from the left of a function? A piecewise defined function defined as f of x is um, two x plus one when x is less than negative 2 and f of x has a value of 1 when x is greater than or equal to negative 2. So what we're going to do first is we're going to give ourselves a visual, okay? So we're going to draw a number line and see what's where and know which function is going to be live. The split happens at negative 2. Let's call the top function 1 and the bottom function 2. For x is less than 2, we're taking a look at everything to the left of 2. Okay? Let me use a, an arrow for that. Everything to the left of 2. So all this right here. That is region 2. No. Okay, so for less than, that's region 1. So this is 1 right here, okay? x is less than negative 2. So for x is less than negative 2, we're looking at 2x plus 1. That's, that's what's active here. x is less than negative 2. And then on the other side, we have uh, greater than or equal to. So that's a closed circle. So if you're on the point or anything to the right of that point, you have the second one active. So you have... You're going to like this. So for this one, you have the second function active. So uh, this is region 2, interval 2, where x is greater than or equal to negative 2. And the function that's active here is 1. So the question is, which one are we going to be using for this problem? When you're approaching negative 2 from the left, you're going to be using function 1. And when you're approaching negative 2 from the right, you're going to be using function 2. In this problem, we're approaching negative 2 from the left, so we're going to be using function 1. So this problem simply becomes the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the left of the top function, which is 2x plus 1. To finish this up, you simply substitute. You have 2 times negative 2 from the left plus 1. When you double negative 2 from the left, the sign and the direction remains the same, so it's simply going to be negative 4 from the left plus 1. All right, so negative 4 from the left, if you think about what this is, negative 4 from the left is um, let's visualize that with a number line real quick. Negative 4 from the left with a number line. This is negative 4 right here. And then negative, uh, negative 3 is to the right and negative 5 is to the left. So negative 4 from the left, you're coming from this direction. So between them is 
negative 4.5. So if you get really close to negative 4 from the left, what you're looking at is negative 4.00, infinite number of zeros, zero, 01. So this is negative 4.00, infinite number of zeros, zero, 01 plus 1. If we subtract these two, subtract and keep the sign of the bigger, this is going to be negative 3.00, infinite number of 0, 0, 001. That is negative 3 from the left. What are you approaching here? You are approaching negative 3, and that's your final answer.